Hello everyone, this is Kevin, the Homemaker Husband. I'm glad you're choosing to spend a few moments with me this evening. It is evening time. It's now because of the time change, 10 after 9. Seems earlier than that. That's pretty old, isn't it? Anyway, I thought I would start out by telling you about what happened to us the other night. We were both asleep, uh, obviously. It was the middle of the night. And I came awake, and I don't know exactly what woke me up, but I came to realize that there was a strange noise in the, in the kitchen area. I, I laid there for a few minutes. I realized that Michelle was awake listening too. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what it was. So I suppose I laid there a minute or so trying to figure it out. And I thought, well, I better get up and go have a look. So I, I got up out of bed and I wandered out here into the kitchen area. And as soon as I come out of the uh, bedroom, obviously, it got louder. And I worked my way over. And I'll show you right now what I discovered it was. Okay. Okay, so here's what I found when I come out looking. Look at those plants. I apologize, it is the light from this hydroponic planter that looks so purple. These vegetables were planted five days ago. Or sorry, they were up in five days and it's been eight days as I record this right now, eight days. These tomatoes here are up an inch and a half all of them they are romas and then you can see back there tiny tims and rainbow tomatoes that one there is just turned literally because the plants lean towards that light so they're romas as well and these ones here are rainbows now if you remember that other little black square thing i showed you there is seven or eight plants up in that as well so that's that's what all the noise was plants growing. So, obviously, by now, you figured out that I was joking when I told you that story. I always used to say that in the spring of the year when it would get to the point where the grass was going to start growing that it would be a good thing that your window wasn't right next to the lawn because the grass would keep you up growing. It grows so fast, right? Those plants were really pleased so far. They are doing extremely well. The only one that I look down in, the little hole where you drop the seeds, that I'm concerned about is the spinach. Now, last year we tried two or three times, or last summer, fall, whatever, we tried two or three times to get spinach to grow in that, and it just wouldn't grow. The seeds would just kind of rot and, and rot, and they wouldn't germinate. When I look down in that little hole now, it looks like it's definitely moldy, right? Fuzzy mold on it. And most all the seeds will get that way and then you can see the green coming. So I'm concerned with that. So today, one of the things I did is I went out and got a new package of spinach. Now Michelle tells me that this is a different kind. So I'm not quite ready to plant anyway. But so maybe I'll look and get a different uh, package of seeds. My thought process is if the, that seed that's planted there or them seeds that are planted there would be from the same package that we tried last year and maybe the seeds just aren't any good. So if that, if that doesn't produce in the next three or four days, I'm going to try to plant seeds from a different package and we'll see what happens then we definitely would like to get some spinach going so we can grow it obviously dehydrate it we have been loving the dehydrated spinach in of all things scrambled eggs are beautiful and maybe i'll show you how i do that sometime the other thing i picked up was some cabbage seeds now i know that cabbage require a fairly large uh space but i know you can grow them in a pot right i know you can 
because I've seen it done and I'm going to give it a try. Also, I picked up another bag of this seed starting mixture. We have had really good luck. I used 90% of the last bag we bought to start them seeds, everything we've got over there. So I bought another bag. Also, I got these. You can see them there. When those seeds, and I'm going to show you, so I'll step out of frame here for a minute. That right there seems to be a root. I don't want to pull it because that could very well be a root. But when I start to see a few more little roots, and, and there you can actually see them, roots coming. So I'm going to say that by the end of this week, before them seeds to, or roots start coming out there so far that I'm going to tear them to take this peat thing out of, of the plastic thing here, I'm going to plant them in these. And if that these plants, and as you can tell, there's two there, so whether or not they'll both survive or whether I'll have to kind of snip one, I'm not sure. But before they're out through there so much that the roots are just everywhere and it would kill it or, or do a serious damage to take it out of that plastic holder there, I'm going to plant them in these. And if these get to be, you know, if the plants in these get to be 8 or 10 inches tall before they go outside, that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, that'll be a good thing. So that's kind of the plan right now. And when it gets time to harvest, obviously, we'll show you what we do with them. And I say that knowing that we're not supposed to count our chickens before they hatch. We're not supposed to count our tomatoes before they're ripened, right? So, but we still plan for the future. Now, I want to show you something else. Um, this bag of dog treats is the one that Noah's currently eating, and it's almost gone. But this, they were $12.97 for a long time, then they went to $14.97. And then they went to $16.97. And then they did a rollback on them, and you could get them for $14.97 again. But right now at Walmart, this bag of 40 dentist sticks is $17.99. Now, I used to feed Noah some soft dog food, but it doesn't agree with his stomach. It uh, gives him an upset stomach, and I don't need to go any further than that. But I would buy a flat, a 24 pack, and I paid, the last time I bought one, it was $29. And that's been a year or so ago. Well, a year ago. And I noticed last night at Walmart, that same case was $39.99. Cat food, uh, I'm guessing it's gone up 30, 40%. Pet foods are crazy. And as you know, Noah eats dog food. Well, I bought him a bag of that last night and it was $17. And the last time I bought it, it was 12. That's a huge increase, huge. He eats enough of the same food that we do. And I mean, our food is getting expensive as I'm gonna show you in a moment, but he doesn't eat a lot of dog food. Let's just put it that way. And some of the people food that he gets, he can all, I, I can almost feed that to him as cheap as I can dog food now. So, but I wanted to show you, well, I've showed you that, the dentist sticks. This is a can of the great value luncheon meat that we have here. Oh, it's on our pantry shelf. I just took it off for the sake of this video. This can has been $1.97 for eons. That, that can was $1.97. And it's been really hard to get. So, Michelle told me the other day, she was going through, like she always does, preparing a, a grocery order, grocery list, and she said, it's now two forty-seven. dollars So, I'm no math genius, but if they increase the price from $1.97 to two forty-seven. dollars you have to take it from the $1.97 price, right? That is 
50 cents, so it's actually more than a 25% increase, 25.7% increase in a price of this. And I did see it today, I was in Walmart, and I walked by just to check, and yep, 247. You can tell it's like a new run. The label is a bit different. It's a lot darker, brighter, bolder. Now here's another thing. In the, one of the last videos that you've seen where we did a grocery haul, I had these little chickens. And if you can see that price, $8.02 for this one. And we had another one, I think it was $7.97. That chicken right now on the Walmart app today is $19.97. Now I believe Michelle's gonna put a picture up to verify what I'm saying is true on this and the luncheon meat. Food prices are getting scary. Now, that being said, Michelle and I are still eating out of our pantry. We're eating up as much of our old stock as we can right now. We are going to build up some more of those things that like don't have a shelf life. Garbage bags, anything that lasts, I say garbage bags and uh, what else would I say? Just things that don't expire, things that you know will last a long time. Now I know the liquid laundry detergent, lots of people have said that in a year or so it will break down. So probably wait a few months when I say a few, probably three months, maybe we'll buy another jug or two. And that'll just keep pushing it out, pushing our date out, you know. Uh, so far, everything we have is working great. We're not getting into any problems there. But it's the things that have no expiration on that we're gonna be concentrating on for the next little while and try to use up some of our older stock and then we'll replenish again. We've learned a lot and we continue to learn and that's a good thing, I guess. So, now, also, here in Canada, last week, the Bank of Canada, they met again to discuss whether or not to raise the overnight interest rate, and they decided not to. They said that our interest, or our, um, economic situation, isn't that awful how things will leave you in senior moment, right? Um, our inflation rate is stable and maybe even gone down a little bit. As you can tell by some of these food prices here, inflation in New Brunswick is not stable. I seen a report, it's been a couple of weeks ago yet, all of, of all of Canada, New Brunswick's inflation rate was still the highest. Now, I think the way they get away with that, boys, they fudge numbers awful. Gasoline is a little cheaper right now. Well, it's a lot cheaper than it was. Uh, right now, over about too far from here, this gas station, it's $1.62. Uh, even last week, I paid $1.69, I think. Or maybe it's, anyway, it's $1.62, 63. It's cheaper this week than it was last even. Diesel fuel is way down, thank goodness. So, when it's convenient, they don't factor those things in to the inflation rate to make it seem like it's lower than what it is. And when it's inconvenient, they'll add it in, right? To, to make their, or when it, you know, it's always to their convenience. Anyway, so they're saying that inflation is stable or actually going down. We don't see that reflected in food prices at all. They're uh, still getting crazy, silly. And you know what? For those of you who are on fixed incomes or raising children, you have my sympathy. And trust me when I say I'm praying for this country. Um, I know that you probably are having a tough time. I remember when I was a kid, I ate as much as three men. I always did. And uh, I can't imagine what it would cost to feed me today as a 10, 11 year old boy. But anyway, uh, yeah, I had a 
like a phenomenal week. Well, the last couple of weeks have been exceptional weeks, long weeks, tiring weeks, but um, I can work a little more to a certain point, right? And try and drive that paycheck up a little bit, whereas some people maybe can't. So I am truly blessed in that way. Uh, the US now, I heard last week, or like this week just passed, that your inflation rate came out and it's up three tenths of a point again. It's looking like maybe the US economy is still foundering a little bit. And really when we stop and look at, I'm trying to be very diplomatic. And you all, if you've watched me, you know I love the US, so I'm certainly not bagging on you, not by any stretch of the imagination. I just think it's a shame what's going on there. I've always, always loved trucking in the US and I met a lot of good people there over the years, so I feel really bad. But anyway, uh, also, uh, oh yes. So jobless claims are up a little tiny bit, I guess. And they say that that's because more people were coming back into the workforce. Now, I don't believe for a minute, and probably most of you don't, that there's been a whole lot of jobs created in the U.S. All that's happening is people are going back to work after the big event that took place that sent everybody home, locked everybody down for a certain amount of time. People were drifting back to work. There's more government benefits that are ending, driving more people back to the workforce, which is a good thing. Um, in California last week, you saw, what is it called, Silicon Valley Bank folded up, and that's the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, and that will have ramifications out for years, I'm sure, but in the very near future, it's probably going to be quite rough. But at any rate, God's still on his throne, and he working her all out. Nothing's happening that isn't out of his control. Some of you might not believe that, but I do. Anyway, I guess that's about all. No, nope, I'm wrong. I wanted to show you a couple other things. Um, Michelle and I were way ahead of the ball game. And it's her. All credit goes to her. And she always says, I don't need any credit. Well, still. Thursday night I come home and we made our, and I'm going to call them, famous beef and bean burritos. If you haven't tried them, maybe Michelle can link it in the description here to the video where we showed making them. If that video indeed still exists. Our beef and bean burritos. It's her recipe. They are stupid. It, they are one of my favorite things. Really, they truly are. And uh, they're convenient. We made them a batch of them, 20 of them, for the deep freeze on Thursday night. And I'm not sure how long it took, an hour maybe. And well, well worth it. We just take them out of the freezer the night before we want them. I get up in the morning when I'm going to work. I stick mine in the microwave for one minute. I guess that's if they come right out of the freezer. And it thaws them completely. It warms them just a little bit. I take them in my lunch and I eat them that way whenever I feel like eating them. These ones here look exactly the same. But on Friday night, we made what we're calling breakfast burritos for the deep freeze. Now these two... I took out so they would thaw. We're planning on eating them in the morning to uh, see how they turned out. They have uh, bacon, sausage, cheese, hash brown potatoes, onions, and if there's anything else, Michelle can give the description. So we made them Friday night, and they were labor intensive. It took quite a while, and I was tired when we got done, and I'm sure Michelle was as well. And then, I'm just going to show you these. We call these our little protein balls. 
Now, these ones, we made a batch for Michelle and a batch for me. They're all the same size. The only thing that's different is the ingredients a little bit. She used honey to sweeten hers, and I used agave syrup, which is supposed to not spike your blood sugar quite as much. But we made, I guess, mine. I had 17 of mine and 16 of hers. These are so good and so simple that I believe the next time we make them, I'm going to make a video on it. Uh, I believe there's already one, maybe. I'm pretty sure. Actually, there is one. But I might make another one just to show you how easy they are. And they're very good and they're very filling. The only thing I think I'll do the next time I make mine is add some protein powder to make them even more filling. So, uh, it was a busy weekend, but at the same time, because we got some baking, some meal prep done Thursday night and Friday night. Yesterday was a lot easier day, and today I didn't have a whole lot to do. I did a bunch of laundry, I guess, and Got the floor vacuumed and a few little odds and ends like that, but nothing that was very labor intensive. Anybody could do it, actually. So, anyway, it was good. It was a good weekend. Time change is a bugger. Hopefully, they'll figure out how to not force us to do that anymore. So, if you've watched this far, know that I appreciate it very much. Appreciate each and every one of you. Hopefully, uh, if you are, are enjoying the content, give us a thumbs up. You know, that really helps us. Anyway, this is Kevin, the Homemaker Husband, saying God bless and bye for now.